Floyd's Register Energy held an open house for their new Houston training facility on June 3rd. This is Lloyd's Register's third training center of this kind. Lloyd's Register currently has four BOP risk models deployed in the Gulf of Mexico and is working to make the technology real-time and exploring ways to bring this methodology to other offshore drilling systems. If there is one positive aspect that we can take away out of the current market situation in our oil and gas sector is that um, the industry and our clients are taking a um, a very professional approach to their business operation. Uh, in response to the market situation, obviously the industry and our clients uh, have been focusing on a reduction in, of their cost base, followed by a critical look at their supply chain network. Doing so, uh, they further reduce their cost. Um, we are assisting currently our clients in doing so based on risk profiling of their supply chain network. However, uh, we are convinced that only doing this will not suffice to face the challenges that we have to face uh, going forward in the near future. Technical innovation will be a key aspect going forward. Only through technology innovation we can make quantum leaps of improvement. During today, the open house here in Houston of our training uh, center, we are demonstrating new technology innovations that are currently being deployed in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, all of these examples, and I can show you to one to my uh, left hand side, um, is the BOP risk model. The BOP risk model is quite an interesting development. It's an application that we have taken out of the nuclear industry and deployed it into the drilling industry, covering the BOP operation itself. Through the application of modern risk management techniques, we are able and capable of offering our clients uh, a transparent decision-making uh, fun uh, foundation platform uh, where we can simulate multiple failures in a BOP stack and assist the client in their decision-making uh, whether to pull or not to pull a BOP stack. It's a, 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 an interesting example of how you can use modern risk management techniques in your current decision making every single uh, day. Another development that we're working on is also here demonstrated on the left hand side is the application of fiber optic sensing technology. Fiber optic sensing technology enables us to apply it, here it is applied to a RAM BOP, um, to have quite rudimentary and basic equipment uh, that will start to talk to us in a way. Um, it will tell us about what type of stresses are applied on the equipment. It starts to explain us what normal wear and tear patterns are, but also what abnormal wear and tear patterns are. So in a way, by applying risk modeling techniques, condition monitoring techniques such as fiber optic sensing technology, we can adjust the maintenance program um, in such a way that we do the right uh, amount of maintenance at the right time, we can reduce non-productive time uh, and we can improve the safety and risk profile uh, of any given operation, any given asset employed, currently employed in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, a further advancement is really the application of reliability modeling. Doing so and introducing the factor of predictive maintenance, we can really forecast when certain components and equipment is about to fill, enabling our clients to proactively anticipate on that failure and taking precautions in order to prevent that from happening. It also gives the client the ability to see whether in a certain uh, time frame or in a certain operational window the equipment will remain in a fit for purpose uh, condition so that um, you can uh, have a trouble free operation uh, going on forward. That having said, uh, that also is uh, the very commitment that Lloyd's Register Energy has in the area of big data, data analytics, data mining. Uh, as we feel that those are fundamental game changers to the industry. We are performing many research and development projects currently in the LR group in order to get a, a, a better understanding of how to deploy those techniques and how to make them available to the drilling industry itself. 
a, a last closing statement that I would like to make is uh, as our clients are working on further improving their business operation, we are convinced that we can play a very important role in that particular conversation and that technology innovation should not be seen as a barrier but as a catalyst for further improving the oil and gas sector. Another technology that was demonstrated here at the center is fiber optic sensing technology. Applied to a BOP stack, the sensing technology can provide a picture of what types of stresses are being applied on the equipment, what normal wear and tear patterns are, and even what abnormal wear and tear patterns are. So I'm new to the oil industry. I've been in the oil industry for about four years now, which is nothing compared to a lot of my colleagues. Uh, I came in from uh, my background uh, in, in aerospace at Johnson Space Center. And when I started working in this piece of uh, machinery, one thing that became very apparent that we have a lack of telemetry coming from these machines. Where I came from, we have uh, telemetry from everything uh, that tells us the health of the, of the ship. Um, it, after Wakanda, it became obvious that we needed to do something to understand what the uh, op have more operational verification of how the blowout preventer sensor is to the last line of the So we are utilizing some new technologies that are more robust in those harsh environments to take those measurements that will tell us if the rain were closed, what the degradation <laughs> state of the equipment is. Um, and then the next logical step is to take this data and integrate it with the control systems and also with our liability and our risk assessment models and software to uh, assist in real-time assessment of these POPs. Uh, so these technologies will all be coming together in the future and then even one step further with the, with the control centers that they have at these at the operators and also at the contractor level. Uh, Drilling, uh, the drillers, um, we can integrate this data and give them real-time operational information that they did not have before. The BOP risk model is a way to objectively assess risk on a BOP stack that's being utilized during drilling operations and it is to uh, allow you to very quickly uh, determine if you need to or to assist people that are offshore to understand, to inform them whether to pull or not to pull the BOP stack. It's going to it's going to lessen the amount of uh, exposure you, your personnel, your environment, and your assets have to risk. It's going to very objectively, like I said earlier, it's going to very objectively uh, tell you what the risk is. It's repeatable, so whatever whatever component breaks today and you take it out, it's going to repeat that same. Uh, it's going to give you the same level of risk the next time you use it. It does allow you to communicate with the regulators in a very effective way of giving them a very a very quick picture of what the risk is overall, as well as any of the other systems and subsystems and how they uh, are affected by that one component failure. And the other, probably the, one of the better things about the BOP risk model is we can actually model multiple component failures. So uh, where one component failure is, um, is, is, is bad enough, but if you have multiple component failures, it's hard sometimes to figure out uh, how, they, how they relate to one another. We have four implemented in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we're currently working with various entities about doing real-time, uh, making it real-time. We're looking at other systems because this methodology applies to every system, the, every critical system offshore, whether it be DP, uh, beneath the mud line, and various other critical systems you may encounter out there. We're also, we have a, a pilot that we're working on now with regards to reliability. There's several other things that we're looking at working on to actually do all critical systems to, and to make it modular so that you can you can pick and choose what you want or how, how much of how much of the system that you need for your particular operation. But reliability obviously is a very important piece because it'll feed back into the risk side and it can also feed back into the maintenance side.